Hi, welcome to Altair Solar, where we discuss all things solar panel systems. I'm your host, Ariana Escalante, and I'm here with Altair Solar President Khalid Al Sheriff. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So let's talk about the key considerations before deciding to go solar. What are they? All right, great. So um, a lot of times people want to, you know, once they get that summer bill specifically, mm -hmm. it's like $300, they just want to <laughs> call a solar contractor and want solar yesterday, you know? So uh -huh. um, that's a good solution, but it's not necessarily the best solution. Sometimes mm -hmm. you want to actually do a little bit of uh, homework prior to actually considering solar. And I think, uh, you know, for example, some of the things that you can do is energy audit, right? A lot of times, especially if you have an older home, you live in an older home, there'll be leaks on your windows and your doors, right? Mm. So when you turn on the AC, the AC is trying to get to that temperature, you know, 72 degrees or 70 degrees or 68, some people like it cold, you know. Mm -hmm. But again, a lot of that cold air is leaking through these mm -hmm. windows. So you do an energy audit where there's a company that will come in and they'll determine where the leak is coming from and you fix that leak. So that's mm -hmm. one way to actually reduce your energy uh, bill or your electrical bill before you even do solar. Mm -hmm. Another good one would be uh, if you have a pool. A lot of the pools mm -hmm. back in the day, they used to have a single variable uh, pool pump, which consumes more electricity. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, there's uh, what, what's called variable speed pumps on the pool. Mm -hmm. So this is great because then again, it reduces the energy because pool pumps is one of the sources of uh, higher consumption. So you want to make sure mm -hmm. to reduce that. Another one also, if you have an older AC unit, you know, so the AC units are measured in SEERS, S-E-E-R. So the higher the SEER, that's the more efficient the unit. So you mm -hmm. want to make sure if you have an older unit, that, for example, you know it's going to go bad in a year or two, or you predict it, or it's gone bad before, but you fixed it, you kind of mm -hmm. patched it. So now it's time to consider replacing that unit. Finally, or not finally, but another one would be uh, LED lights, you know, so mm -hmm. light emitting diodes, you know, that's what LED stands for. So those are very efficient. So uh, back in the day, you know, you have a 100 watt light bulb. So the illumination out of a 100 light bulb, bulb, now you can get the same illumination, but from like maybe uh, 15 watts on an LED. Mm -hmm. uh, they look the same, they're dimmable, they're different colors. So this is something else that you consider. They're not as cheap, mm -hmm. but again, uh, the savings will go for a long time. They last for a very long time as well. So I think those are all great things that you want to make sure that, uh, you know, you consider before, you know, you jump into uh, just going for a solar system. So. Uh, the caveat here is that you, when you make all those changes, you might have to wait for a whole year to see what your bill is going to sure. look like. But you can guesstimate it. And a lot of solar contractors will be able to do that. You, you know, at Altair Solar, we actually have calculators where, mm. for example, if you switched all your lights to LED, we'll figure this out. Mm. Also, uh, if you use the higher SEER, uh, like a, let's say 15 or 16 SEER AC unit, how much that's going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, if you're going to buy an EV, that's another one. Actually, that's the opposite. Mm. Your bill would be 200. But then when you buy the EV, you start charging at home, your bill is right. going to increase to 300. We have ways to actually uh, figure out from the mileage that you're going to be driving, how much that's going to add to your mm -hmm. uh, electric bill. So you can, again, zone, you know, hone into the system size. Mm -hmm. Really model out the whole scenario. Exactly. exactly. So, you know, so you can you can do it that way. But, you know, we do make those recommendations to all our mm -hmm. customers. We say, OK, if I find, especially if I find the high bill, I'm like, OK, something here is not adding up. But let's say it's a 2000 square foot home. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a $500 bill, it's not adding mm. up. Of course, if they're Bitcoin mining, that's a different story. Sure. <laughs> but if there isn't anything, then we'll suspect mostly the number one thing would be either an old AC in it or a leaky, leaky door or a leaky window. Yeah. Uh, one more thing I can think of is, uh, is how long you're staying at the house. You want to consider that as well. Mm. If you're planning to leave early, then I would say, like, or sell the house and move out. Maybe uh, something that, you know, might not make sense to you. But again, uh, we've talked about it before in the past as well. Uh, it does add value to your house. So if you're not sure how long you're going to stay at the house, uh, you know, doing solar will, will definitely be a great investment. You'll save money and at the same time you can add value to your house. Uh, those are kind of like the main consideration, I would say, any mm -hmm. uh, consumer or homeowner want to look into before they jump into doing solar. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is you obviously want to make sure that your uh, solar provider is a contractor, meaning mm -hmm. they have an issued uh, license from the state that allows them to do solar. Uh, for example, in California, uh, C46, that's the trade license number, mm -hmm. uh, C10, that's electrical, and B, general license, all these three licenses allow you to do install solar in California. Mm -hmm. In different states, like for example, Texas might be an electrical license, 
I don't know the exact number for it, uh, you know. So you just want to make sure that, you know, the, the contractor that's going to do solar for you, they have a license mm -hmm. and they also uh, have, uh, uh, basically that license allows them to do solar. So mm -hmm. for example, in California, again, is a C39, that's a roofing license. Mm -hmm. They're not allowed to do solar. They can do the roof mm -hmm. for you, but they're not allowed to do solar. So you want to make sure that they're not a C39. Most, most of the time when they're pulling a permit from the city, the city will do that due diligence for you. But sometimes it does fall in the cracks. Mm. Uh, the city might not be able to pay attention to that. So you as a homeowner want to make sure because uh, you have, you know, you, to get to apply that license, you go, you have to show a certain number of years of experience. You have to go through testing, uh, you know, and then, uh, so basically you know that your contractor knows what they're doing, they're following the code. Another one is you want to make sure that they're uh, properly insured, bonded, mm -hmm. so that just in case something goes wrong, you know, you can actually uh, recoup some of the losses that could happen. You know, a good contractor is not going to have any issues or any major issues, mm -hmm. but nonetheless, you want to make sure that you, uh, the, last, the contractor that you're going for has, has these proper licenses mm -hmm. and the insurance on the box. Mm -hmm. These days, solar has gone pretty mainstream. So what would you say to someone who's considering maybe a solar company that's newer in the space? Right, uh, so nothing wrong with going with a newer company. We all have to start somewhere. So the most important thing is you want to make sure that the company you're going for uh, is licensed, insured, bonded, and uh, you do your due diligence. Ask questions. Make sure they present you with all the facts, uh, what the product they're installing is. Make sure uh, to actually have that in the contract. You know, So mm -hmm. our contract states the equipment that we're using to make sure they actually list that because some other contractors mm -hmm. don't do that. So you want to make sure you have that listed equipment that you're using because you want to make sure that that's what's getting installed, um, mm -hmm. you know. And again, you know, if you can ask them for references, referrals, you know, that'd be great because that's a great source. You know, like a neighbor or a friend has gone and used them before. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I mean, online reviews they might not have a lot of them, but again, you know, online reviews is a great, a great source as well. So uh, you know, new or old, you know, applies for everybody. You know, you just make sure you do your due diligence, ask the questions, get presented with the facts, and then have everything in the contract. In a previous episode, you spoke about the brands being used on the actual components of the system. Do you have any different thoughts around the uh, longevity or reputation of the brands of the actual components? Right. Um, so the brands are, you know, it's an important factor. So technically speaking, there, there's not a lot of differences in, in how it's manufactured and how it's producing. Uh, but again, a, a, an older company, a reputable brand, will be around if anything happens and you need mm -hmm. to actually activate those warranties. So that would be the thing. But uh, overall, I mean, there's great manufacturers. Of course, you don't want to go for a very cheap product because mm -hmm. you know that's going to fail. But like I'm saying, like a mediocre or like a, a medium level panel or medium level inverter, uh, you know, will actually uh, just, just do us fine. You know, as long as the company behind it is, is strong and reputable. Uh, sometimes you want to dig into the financials of the company, especially if they're a public company, you can actually see their financials, you can see how well they're doing. So that's also uh, another good way of determining whether the product you're being presented with is actually a good one. Thank you so much for sharing. And if you are curious to learn about any of the topics that we covered in this video, things like warranties or the components in a solar panel system, be sure to check out our other videos where we dive a little bit deeper. Thanks again for watching. This is Altair Solar with President Khalid Al-Sheriff. I'm Ariana Escalante, and we'll see you soon.